What's going on, people? It's Truth in the Booth podcast, and we're back with another one. I'm ill, but I still got to do this, man. You know what I mean? I still got to do this. So if my throat sounds a bit bad because I'm ill, my nose starts making noises on the mic because I'm ill. But right now, I've got my brother here, man. First of all, this guy is one of the most talented artists I've heard in the past 10 years. I'll say 10, maybe even 15. But definitely the last 10 years, the most talented I've heard. Um, you know, his music is just, his music's just real. His art, I say his art, is just real. And to me, he's an artist that I'll be missing because I want to hear lyrics, man. I want to hear meaning. I want to hear truth. I want to hear your story, your real story. I want to hear your pain. I want to hear your losses. I want to hear your wins. I want to hear the whole real story. I don't want to hear fantasy no more. I don't mind fantasy here and there, but there's too much fantasy going on and not enough real. And this brother here, right here, is real. Straight out of Canada, Montreal, where they speak French. You're going to get into that in a bit, you know what I mean? Because I, I find that fascinating. That hip-hop is global. Ain't this in America? Ain't this in the UK? Ain't this in Toronto? It's, it's everywhere, you know what I'm saying? And everyone's got a story to tell. Mm-hmm. And my brother here, you know, I'm going to let him explain himself because, I, you know, I talk a lot. Take the floor, bro. Appreciate the way you introduced me, my Don. Montreal, straight up. Joe Compadre's in the house. You know how it goes, man. One time. Mm-hmm. Love. Let's check out his track, So So Far. I'm going to give him a plug straight away because this is my favorite song of this month. I'm playing it every day when I'm driving my car, when I'm doing my dishes. It's So So Far, featuring Jada Kiss. Make sure you check that out because that's probably one of the best hip hop videos and best hip hop songs I've heard this year. And I'm not just saying that because in my podcast, I'm saying because I'm actually a fan. Because the production's A1, the lyrics are A1, Jada Kiss is co-signing it, so that's all we need to know. So soulful, check that out. So, as you guys know, this is the Truth in the Booth podcast, and this podcast is about the economics and entrepreneurship and uh, business behind hip-hop, the music industry, and the entertainment industry. So, um, yeah, today's today's topic, we're going to ask a few questions to my guest. And the first question I want to ask you is, um, when did you when did you find that, that hip-hop was a business. I found out that hip hop was a business once I saw, I got to see the, the corporations behind it, right? So once I, I got to see that some people that don't even know the culture were trying to profit off of it, I was like, damn, man, there's millions. You know what I'm saying? There's more than millions being made out of this, this whole genre, right? So, you know, it took me by storm a bit because I was like, the people that were supposed to control this shit are the people that actually know about it, right? But, you know, once lawyers come in, corporations come in, you realize, man, you know what I mean? There's a whole lot of money being made. Mm-hmm. Nah, this is facts, man. And of the day, a lot of money being made. And the thing is, <clears throat> with the music business, it's a business that's built on keeping information hidden. Mm. The more you learn about it, then you realize, hold on, all the money gets made because of Joker Padre, your your art, your lyrics, your melodies, your flows, your videos, yeah. your art is what generates all the actual money. But yeah, the, yes. yeah but the middleman will never tell you that. Mm. Because record label just the middleman. Their job is just to market, promote, and fund it. But if you can market, promote, and fund it, then you then why would you need them? So that's why they keep it hidden from us. So you're right. There's a lot of money to make. Especially now with streaming. With streaming now, your 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 music earning. I know they don't pay a lot, but your 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 music's worth something. You know, before they're like, oh, what's the point owning a hundred percent of nothing? Well, that's not true anymore because with streaming, your music, if, as long as your music, if your music's being heard, you're getting paid. Right. So it's worth something now. You, you get me. So my next question is, um, your name, Joe Compadre, is that how did you come up with that name? Like, where where did the where did the name come from? Yeah. So my you know my my parents are from DR. They're Dominicans. So um, my pops used to always call his brother compadre, you know? And so it slowly got into my head, you know, until I understood what it meant, you feel me? And, you know, the way I feel about that word is simply that it comes from the heart. You know, it's like saying, yo, my my dear homie, my, my beloved, you feel me? And so, you know, that's the same way I treat the culture, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted to choose that name to stay true to who I am. Not bring no fantasy, fantasy, uh, sorry, fantasies around, no bullshit. You know what I mean? So, Joe Compadre was the was the way for me. You know what I mean? That's how that's how I see it. That's a it's a dope name, man. Especially in Palo Santo. You know what I mean? I'm learning. Mm-hmm. I'm, 
Yeah. Now, babe, I'm learning the Spanish lingo right now, you know what I mean? Now you got it, man. You got it. it from you. Cause I, I ain't gonna lie, I've had your music on repeat because you got your. I'm going back to your, your art. I think once people are going to go on Google you and, and be on YouTube, like your art is very good. Like, you know, it's just very good. Like, I just keep it on 1000. It's just, it's very good. And it's just like, um, like, just everything about what you're doing is just has high quality. Even at Son Paulo Santo, like, I couldn't even pronounce it before, but now I've, I've heard it so many times. I, because of the lyrics, I know it. The lyrics have taught me how to pronounce it properly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Robbie, man, you're super talented, man. I just think, like, once more people hear about you, they're going to know. My, my next question that came, so your, your background's from DR, but you grew up in Canada, Montreal, if I'm correct. Um, how was it growing up in Montreal, like, in Canada? How was it growing up there? It's, it's cool, man. It's, it's a nice city. I'm saying good vibes all around. I'm from the roughest, one of the roughest sections. So I'm from uh, the Southeast and, you know, South Central to be exact. It's a little different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the city has a few few spots that where you can feel the misery. But in general, it's really good, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, it ain't like, because the States is different. You know what I'm saying? Every country has its difference. But, um... Growing up here, man, it's, it's a whole lot of greenery, good vibes. I mean, and yeah, pretty much, man. Sorry, I'm ill, bro. But, yeah, sorry, I'm ill, brother. Nah, sorry about that. Listen, it's all good. It's like London. It's like London, man. Like that London tea. Yeah, but even London, like people think, like I'm not being Canada before. Only I only think I actually know about Canada is um is um. Is like Toronto. That's only because of like Drake and stuff like that, and like Cardinal yeah. Official. The first guy here was Cardinal Official. Dangerous back in the day when I was young, and um, and Tory Lanez. Well, Tory Lanez has been out for a while. He's not new to me. He's been out since World Star days. We know we've listened to Tory Lanez for a long time over here. He's been. He's yeah. been I mean, he did like an Aston Martin remix back in the day in World Star. But um, they're like the biggest Canadian artist in, like, in, in hip hop. Oh, um, that, yeah. But like, what's the difference between Toronto and Montreal? What's what's the difference between the two? It's a, there's a cultural difference, which is uh, we're from a, you know Montreal is French mostly, right? So it's the French culture, and Toronto is more you know Anglo. So you know even in terms of the immigration side of things, it's different because Toronto there's a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of you know the the Commonwealth side of you know what I mean the Caribbean. More us is more like Haitians and you know what I'm saying uh, people from what else, man, Guyana. French, the French guy, to be exact, or fucking. There's a whole lot of Jamaicans and Trinity too, but more on the French side of things. You know what I'm saying? So it's different. It's pretty different. Uh, I think that, I think that's dope, man. Like, cause, like from you, I've done my research. I'm trying to look into Canada more. I did, I have I had no idea about this whole like French speaking. I had no idea about this. You know what I mean? I just like I actually see stuff back in the day that like, the guys with the red little jackets on and little hats and stuff like that. You know, the guys. Yeah. That's only, but I didn't really understand what that was about, you know what I mean? But now, yeah, yeah. But now I understand that. I said, like, okay, I get it. Because I but because we're not really over here in the UK, they're not really it's mostly American culture that's pushed over here in England, not really Canadian oh, yeah. culture, you know what I'm saying? Even though England technically still own your country, technically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, know I mean? you only got you got your own prime minister, but that's for another that's for another day. So my next question mm -hmm. now, let's get more into the um but we'll keep it on the Canada topic. How is it doing hip hop in Canada? Like, what is it like being a hip hop artist in Canada? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. I feel like it's they keep us in a kind of aquarium. I don't know how to say it. It's like you can only make it to the states if you get the right push or cosigns or you know what I'm saying right eyes that accept you within the culture, you know what I'm saying? Because as a Canadian, they, they feel like we don't have anything to say, you know what I mean? So nothing not, nothing against that, you feel me? I get you. I, I get I get their their opinion, but um, you know what I'm saying? I feel like everyone got their own word to, to speak, you feel me? So uh, the, the platforms are also hard to, to get the outside eyes looking in, you know what I'm trying to say? So it's difficult for people from the outside to actually look here because they got enough going on in their own, I'm saying so it's it's not it's not as easy as it would be if you're somewhere where things are actually rolling. I'm saying Canada's really very really like close when it comes to that. You know, they don't really dig hip hop like that. You feel me? 
That's crazy. I, I wouldn't, yeah, I know what you mean by it. Because um, in, in the UK, we've got like a thick accent. So I, I understood why Americans didn't like our rapping at the start. Now they like yeah. it. But back in the day, they, they didn't like that. You get laughed at by Americans. They don't take us seriously. A funny ass accent. Your funny ass. <laughs> Drinking tea ass, tea ass, crumpet ass accent. That's what I say, crumpet ass, tea ass, all that stuff. They say about us. But with Canada, your accent is the same. Like, I wouldn't know the difference. No, you wouldn't know. They 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 can hear it. Oh, they okay. can hear. It. But uh, you know, I feel like nowadays since Drake and and like you said, Tory Lanes and and those artists just came into the scene. Now it's it's a bit more uh you know, respected and accepted, you know, because they they can hear people that resemble mm-hmm. them. I don't know mm-hmm. how to say because the U the thing with the US is that they're so self-centered, right? Okay. They don't like they, they won't know a state in Canada. They can't tell you a state. They, they're only gonna say, yo, this guy's from Canada. They don't know their states, their cities. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know about that. I could tell you all the states and all the cities in the in the US, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not as Canada's not as self-centered, but the U.S. is so it's uh, I can understand that you feel me. No, there's no judgment that comes with that. It's just you gotta you gotta understand. No, I, I get it, man. I, I I've been sure I thought it was only a UK thing because um, it makes sense because Americans are all about their culture. Like if from the West Coast is different from the South over there, so I get it. It's, it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. Big country, their their cultures are all different. So, but I don't know. I just feel like it's um, it's so open now because of the internet. People want to know about. Different culture. Like, I want to know about your culture. I want to know about Montreal. I want to know about Montreal sure. culture now. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff that's cool because I know about. I don't know about. It, but I'm aware of it. But with the internet now, the reason why anyone can make it now doesn't even matter where you're from because as long as you're, it's, it's got to be dope now. Because I've heard, I've heard Americans rapping like UK man. Yeah, and to me that's weird. To me, I'm gonna. Lie. To me, that's like kind of kind of cringe. I'm not gonna lie. So I get it when they heard us rapping, they thought it was cringe because I understand it now because I'm hearing them rap like us. And I think it's yeah. weird, but at the same time, I, res- I respect I, re- I respect it as well because they, they show respect to us. So it's so I don't care. I think it's good where we are in hip hop in terms of everyone's embracing everyone's culture now. I think you coming yeah. out right now could break a lot of stereotypes because when I first saw you, I thought you were from New York. Definitely, yeah. I thought you were from I didn't know you from Canada until I, until I went on your website. I thought like, oh, you from Canada. I thought you were from New York just the way you looked and the way you sound. So if someone like me, I wouldn't have a clue. But if I'm from America, you're right; they would know. Um, it's a good, good conversation, man, because um, it shows that culture plays a massive part in everything we do these days. You know what I mean? It's just such a big, even sure. music, because music does shape culture. You know? Definitely. It's Definitely. Good. So my, so my next question to you is, um, um, what's the, okay, what's the biggest challenge you face right now as an artist? So as an independent artist right now, what's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Well, as, as I'm, I'm feeling privileged. Well, like I, you know, I feel like everyone is privileged enough nowadays to be able to control, uh, you know, the business side of the art. You know, I feel like uh, moving like a label. You know, moving like a major label, is 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 a hard thing. You feel me? Which which is what every artist that is getting into the game should try to do. You know, what I'm saying I understand that some people want to. Uh, get with the middleman so they can get a bigger platform. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But I feel like that's the hardest part. It's really to move as the majors, as the platform. You feel me? Right. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's the hardest the hardest side. That's how yeah. I feel. No, no, I agree with what you're saying. Moving like a label. I love the mindset you have in there because I think most people need that mindset to understand what a label actually does. You can do that for yourself. But most people think they have to do on the level of a corporation like Sony or a corporation right. like Russell. Well, you don't have, you don't make three, four billion dollars every three months. They do. Okay. So no. they have to spend a lot of money on marketing to maintain that level of revenue. As an independent artist, you can make $300 a month, $400 every five months, $5,000 a You know what I'm saying? If you're lucky, yeah. 50000 You know what I'm saying? Six, if you're really, you're really putting that work, half a million. These things are possible now as a self-releasing artist now, the main thing is what you said there, you got to think like an artist and a record label. you got to think about making the great art and then communicating it, getting it out there, funding it yourself. Go and get a nine-to-five job. Go and get a part-time job. You know what I'm saying? And save your money. Mm-hmm. Up, yeah? And you've got a budget. There's no real excuse anymore. Most artists aren't thinking like you, brother. They'll be like, oh, go independent, man. It, you, need, you need money. It costs. It's a risk, man. And it costs money. 
That's every business. That's 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 business. Every business you get into. Yeah. That is common. That's everyone. You want to sell sneakers, you want to bake cakes for a living. You have to do that. You have to invest money and take a risk. So most artists don't want to take that risk. They want someone to do it for them. Or and they want to complain. So I love the fact that you said that, that you've got to feel like a label. It's true, you've got to feel like a label, but you don't have to feel like a major corporation label. You know what I'm saying? No, no, for sure. It's good that you stay said, true to where you at, right? Yeah, stay true to what you stay true to what you're at, man. And I think a lot of people don't get that. Um, my next question is um um what's like what's your views on marketing? Marketing is just, I think it's ninety percent of of where success comes from, you know. If you want to call it success, or whatever, but ninety percent of it is marketing, man. The ten percent is, is is the material you got. Mm -hmm. You could put out the material if you don't have the the, the other ninety percent, then you're not really going nowhere with that. You know what I'm saying? So marketing has to be dominated for you to really get to the to the level where you want to get. You know what I'm saying so. It's important, man. It's important to know about it. Knowledge is key, man. Facts, man. Knowledge is definitely key. Um, definitely key. I think with marketing, um, it's an art. You know, it's an art. Like it's, I always say it's in every episode. It's just an art. It's like making a rap, making a freestyle, playing soccer, playing basketball. These are all different art forms. Making a car. You have to, it's, these are all ways of expressing yourself. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And marketing is the art of communication. That's what it is, how you, how you communicate things to people. So um, a lot of artists don't understand that. And that's what makes a record label valuable because they do that. They do the art of communication for you. You know what I'm saying? They know how to get you from A to B from promotion. Because about the promotion and the distribution, you can't communicate value or, or extract value in return. So you have to know how to do the marketing part. So it's very important that marketing is something you study. You have to study it. It's not something you just wake up in the morning and you know it. I'm still learning it. I've been studying it since I was like, what, 19? You know what I'm saying? My next question to you, brother, is we're going to stay on marketing for a bit, is what's your views on YouTube ads? YouTube ads. YouTube ads, you know, it's a, it's a great tool. It's a great tool because, uh, you know, when we when we spoke about uh, the labels and how they, 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 they do it, you know, we staying in the same topic, which is if you can use Google ads, to reach your audience, which is your targeted audience, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you matching that you, you, you get into the level where you, you want to get, because now it's like you touch, you tapping in with your audience directly. You know what I'm saying? And they, as soon as they click that subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? You got your person uh, forever. You got the audience already tuned in with you. So it's a great tool to use, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass on that. Listen, I love that, man. Me personally, I've never used YouTube ads before. But, um, I've seen a couple of artists that have used it. I think you, you've used it in the past as well. Um, yeah. A lot of people, yeah. yeah, a lot of people use it. And um, um, I don't know. I just think um, I don't know how to use it. So, but I think what you're saying is true. I think it's a great, it's a, it's a great way to get directly in front of your audience and get that awareness. Because sometimes, cause a lot of time, I just skip. But if I, if I, if you put an ad in front of me, I'm gonna watch it because I know you. I'm your fan. So it 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 does work. It just depends how you go. Again, again, with the strategy, how you put who you put the ads in front of is very important. But right. you know, what I mean a lot of time with marketing with a lot of marketing agencies, YouTube ads is great. Any type of marketing is great, but it's all about the strategy. It's all about the target market and how we reach them. So a lot of time with like YouTube ads, a lot of guys are putting ads in front of me. So how, how from what you you might know more than me from but YouTube ads are based on your behavior, based on the data that Google have on your behavior. So that's why a lot of ads you see, if you, for example, if you went to the gym and you drank some, you drank a, you drank a orange juice, the whatever, whatever brand that was, you might see that when you when you go on YouTube. And you know what I mean? Because they're right. collecting data on us, they're listening to us, they're spying on us, and if we type, they use all that data, the right ads in front of us. So it's good for that, but at the same time, I skip a lot of ads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But if you but as an artist, if I really like your music and you put an ad in front of me, I'm most likely going to watch the ad because I want to know about your music. So sure. it, it all depends how you go about using it. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Do you feel like you feel like it's, you've had success with it, YouTube ads? Personally, I do. It's because it's the level of authenticity, and also you have to pre-program that. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you if your your intro is like ten seconds long. Of course, someone is gonna skip it. But if your track starts boom and and, and they hear it, it's fired. 
you know what I'm saying? They might be in the kitchen while it's, while it's actually going on. And they're like, damn, this shit is actually fire. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me press on, on the subscribe button. So it's all about the tragedy, like you said, that comes with it. everything has to be anticipated before you even do the move. You feel me? So I don't, I don't put the ads out there if I know that the track is not supposed to be a Google ad. Cause it's like, if it takes five to 10 seconds for the song to start, then you know people are gonna skip. I'm saying they don't know you. Why why the hell would they wait five to se ten seconds for you to actually start? I'm saying unless it starts right away. That's how it is, man. You hear that right there, people? That's a little one marketing one on one class right there. Listen to what he just said. Yeah. That's 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 very important what he just said. Study, man. Yeah. Study that. <laughs> now literally what he said there, you listen to that, rewind that part back, because that's that's a if you're an artist trying to do YouTube ads. Rewind that back. That's going to help you, definitely. That was very good. Um, last question on marketing before we move off. What's your views on rollouts? You know, like we told, for example, most artists, brother, when they, when they make their music, they don't, they don't know what to do after they make the music. Now, obviously, we know that you have to, after you make it, you got to have a rollout. That's what Jay-Z does. That's what makes the music successful. What's your views on rollouts and how are you doing your rollouts in today's world? Yeah, the rollouts are... Um... The most one of the most important uh things to do when it comes to like dropping singles, albums, whatever, right? Um, and my view on it is simply that if you know if you want to make it successful, then you have to like again, it's, it goes back to uh, being strategic. Mm -hmm. You have to know how your rollout is gonna move, is gonna function. You know what I'm saying? So you want to put it somewhere like on um in Manhattan. What's the name of uh, Times Square? Let's say you use you use that that screen there, right? So you have to know that the song, if, if if the track or the album is not out yet, then you're just building the anticipation. Everything is about building building the anticipation that comes with it, right? So you build the interest, and once you feel like it's it's time for you to to drop it, then it's time. So you know you give yourself some time, uh, sending emails. I never miss out on that. You know what I'm saying? Touching with the with the media's, um, you know, going outside, printing flyers i'm still posting it like 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 back in the 90s i'm still on the corner talking about my stuff you know what i mean so i feel like uh if you don't do a rollout then you're just releasing your music into a, a, a an empty void you feel me and so you can you can still build off of that but that's just to start once you're already in motion you gotta you gotta think like a like we said like a label and go and get into a rollout you know what i'm saying definitely man for people listening right now, man, it give me some. My brother, my brother right here is giving you good information right now, especially if you're indie, because a lot of people have the excuse, oh, I don't have, I don't, I can't, I don't have a team, I don't have resources. No, you don't have a strategy or a plan. So, rewind back what you just said, because even the old school way of giving up flyers, pulling up posters, that's still very effective. Because people think that don't work. People think everything, everything's about social media. No, social media is just one way of promoting, one way. Yeah. Of album the old way store i agree with the flyers and the posters they still work it's just how you go about doing that stuff you know what i'm saying so i'm happy that you brought that up brother very important people know that um so i'll go back to your music a bit now back to you as an artist now because i think people need to know I, I want people to know about your music and know about you because i think you can, you, a lot of people want to hear your music but again it goes back to marketing we only know what's marketed towards us Either through word of mouth or a friend showing us or a fam a fam mem a family member showing us the music or you know a corporation or some type of promotional vehicle shows us the music, TV, radio, social media, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So my next question to you is like, so how did you how did you link up with Jadakiss? That's that's not an easy task to do, man. Like Jadakiss is a very, very popular man. <laughs> so how oh, did you yeah. link up with him? Um me and Jada's situation it it started with me like seeing that he opened a, a coffee shop. Uh, I think it was back a year ago. And then uh, I just, you know, I posted a story on my, my Instagram account saying uh, that I like, you know, what I'm seeing in terms of the entrepreneurship mentality, the entrepreneurial side of hip hop. You know what I mean? And um, he saw it. But I didn't. Sh I didn't actually tag his account. I tagged the actual coffee shop account, and um, I think he saw it. And the next, you know, the words probably touched his heart or some. I don't know, but you know, the next day he reached. He reached out to me, and 
told me, man, like send me some some joints. Let me hear it. What you got? I'm saying so we can we can put you in a good position. We we could you know what I'm saying if I like what you got going on, then let's do it, right? So I sent a few joints. It came back positive. You know what I'm saying it came out to be a, a a good way of you know getting his attention and yeah. From there, man, I, he told me come come to New York, meet with me. You know what I'm saying and then. The tr- I presented a track to him, and that's how that's how you know I got the the cosign. You know what I'm saying the actual intro and all that. So yeah, smooth man. That's one of the reasons he's a legend. You know, yes, sir. Showing love, man. This is my brother. I ain't gonna talk, man. You know what I'm saying, man. He to, he, he, listen. Real recognize real, you know, that's what I'm gonna say about that. And that track, so soulful, it's just a what's a one, you know what I mean? It's even the intro, everything about it, the video, the cutaways, everything, the way you're just sitting there with Jay the Chocolate, everything just looks like okay, this this you're meant to be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like appreciate that for sure, man. For sure. Yeah, it's you, how, just look, how it's how just, you just look like a, you're meant to be there, like. It's no coincidence that Jada kiss. It happens for a reason, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, but oh. that was cool because it just looks dope. You know what I mean? Everything, everything about that 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 whole thing is just a one man. I start I start watching all your interviews, but obviously they're in French. But I still watch them. You know what I'm saying? Because I just I, yeah, I just, yeah, find, I just yeah. find it interesting. Oh, for sure. I'm, you know, I learned French before I even learned English. So okay, yeah, French you speak. You know, you, you speak a little English though. Like even they speak. Proper French, you you speak a little English though, and then, then you come with the French, but you can speak both in it. I watch a lot of your interviews, but that's good, man. Cause you know, you know, you know, I I used to listen to a lot of French hip hop about ten years ago, like Obuba and Karim and them man like that. Mm. So, yeah. what's what's your what's your views on French hip hop? Good question. What's what's your views on French hip hop? It's it's great, bro. I feel like it adds up to the culture. You know what I mean? Like every time uh, artists go to Paris and such, it shows you that Paris is you know. It's kind of like a, a a good spot to be at when it comes to raising your name, your value, or so you know, such and such. So, yeah, it's, it was only right that people from France started, you know, bringing their own touch to it. Mm-hmm. So, um, Booba, yeah, all that. We 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 man, I used to listen to Booba every day. You know what I'm saying? Back back when I was what like 18, 17, every day, bro. Because because the guy got lyrics, he got quotes, he got he got bars. You feel me? So. If you get what he's saying, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, we didn't get, we know what he was talking about. Me, I liked his video. He had, he had a song called Jimmy, one of the sickest videos I've ever seen. He had to, he, oh, yeah, yeah, French boy the best when it comes to that. I can't lie, man. Oh, that video, Jimmy. You don't need to speak English to know that. Watch, watch that video and you will see. One of the best videos I've ever seen. Jimmy, we'll check that out. We'll, that's that's the cinematic side of things, French, French people really got that. You know, they'd be great with it. Yeah, and you know what's crazy? Um, for, for, I don't know about now, but France is the second biggest market for rap music, for hip hop music. It's France. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it, man. So, for, so do, do you feel like you can be big in France? Do you feel like that's a market for you over there? Oh, for sure, for sure. Especially, you know, simply because I, I speak French. You know what I'm saying, and I, and I could definitely connect with a lot of artists out there. You know, and now I'm from Montreal. They know about Montreal, so mm-hmm. sure. Definitely, man. I think that's definitely something you should look into, man. Because um, I've been Paris. It's kind of similar to London, but in terms of the way it looks, but in terms of the and and the scene of hip hop, they they French hip hop is big. Like we we used to, we used to play over here in London. Like we used to play all the time. Like so right. for you, bro, who speaks for you, you got a massive market, bro. Like you got the French, you got you got France, and do you, you do hip hop in French if you want to or do your own thing. But you speak French, you know what I'm saying? So you, they can relate to you. You know what I'm saying? And you speak English as well, so we can relate. So you got a massive scope of who you can reach, bro, with this with what you're doing. So that's very good. That's what I'm saying being from Montreal is a benefit right now, man. Because think about it, you can go oh, and they don't know about it, you know. It's but it is, it is. But they go know about it because all they need, we, we didn't know about Toronto. No one knew about right. Toronto, no one knew about UK. Come on, I'm from London, bro. Like no one in America was checking for us 10 years ago and 20 years ago. Nobody. Like we have we've we've had rappers for time over here, but we used to get the, the America never took us serious because we didn't have the internet back then. They used to think it was some joke, man. You know what I mean? But obviously now it's different because of the internet. Because we start doing our own thing over here. 
And exactly. Americans thought, hey, everything, right? That's all right. The only group that was kind of known in London was a group called SAS. They were they were Rockefeller. Mm. They were the only ones that like, 20 years ago that was like getting the kind of looks of America. But they used to live in America though. They went to school there. So they can't they're they're UK, but they went to school there. They went to high school there. You know what I'm saying? So they're kind of like a they're UK, but they've got American kind of like they grew up there a bit as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. but from, from people from London now, we didn't have no they didn't, they didn't rate us, bro, to about till recently, man, if I'm honest to you, man. So I think Montreal could be next, man. And you, I think Montreal need... It, it's not really... It, what I've noticed now about music, no one cares where you're from no more, bro. I'll be real. Like, it's just got to be good now. And we, yeah. want, and we, and we want we want people from different places. Like, I, find, I didn't know about Montreal, but now I know about Montreal because of you. You For sure. Montreal, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the platform, man. It's all about the platform, man. Now, nowadays, they can see what we're about, what we're doing, and oh shit, it's actually you know what I'm saying interesting out there. So yeah, yeah. we 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 want to know. People want to know. It's just again the platform marketing. <laughs> we need to, we need to be communicated to us. So um, back to my now we'll talk more about the music business again. So, what's your views on streaming? Streaming, brother. It's a double. It's a double edged sword to me. You feel me? Because now you can tap in with your audience directly through a streaming uh, service. But also the thing with it is that you don't really have control over the, 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 the equity side of it. You know what I'm saying? So you don't you don't receive what you think or what you supposed to receive, you know, and, uh, as a personal opinion. Right. And so um, the, the great the greatest part of it is that there's billions of users on it. And it's like an advertisement tool, right? So you can, you know, like I said, build an audience off of it. So that's that's the good part of it. You know what I mean, and make money. But uh, it's, you know, it's a double edged sword. That's how I see it. Uh, I agree with everything you said there. I agree. I love the fact that you understand the value of streaming, which is it's not really about the money, unfortunately, because they're, they're never going to give us what we're worth. Because we're using we're using somebody else to distribute our product and our art, so they get the money first and they just give us what they want to give us. But I love that you said it's about how many people are there. That's the main asset is how many people are there, and knowing where they, knowing where they're from, the data you get from it. So I agree with you, man. I think it's all about the fans being where the fans are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's yeah, they don't pay, but at least you get something from it. You know what I mean? Like if you get. Yeah. I got hundred K streams. It's for, well, it's four hundred dollars in revenue. Got to pay, t- but then you got to pay tax on that money. People don't talk about the tax part of streaming. You got to pay yeah. tax earnings. So, if you make four hundred dollars, you're not going to take that home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's economically on on a on a money side of it, it's not good for artists. You know what I'm saying? But what you said, I agree with you. It's about it's got billions of people there, and at the end of the day. As long as your music is being listened to, and you know the pe- and you know what country they're listening to your music from, that's the asset to me of streaming. The money is the bonus. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, if your music is being played a million times, you know as an artist, independent artist, you actually know right. Actually, my music is being listened to. We didn't know that before. We didn't, we didn't know that shit before. But, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now we can tell. So, like you said, it's double edged sword with streaming, man. It's all how about what your plan for it is, but. Do you feel like um, sorry, do you feel like uh, that artists need to to start becoming retailers and just distributing their own music themselves? You have to take advantage of it. You know, internet is 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 out here for us to become the real owners of our our art and our you know the craftsmanship. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't take advantage of it, somebody else will. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. Especially like these middlemen, they all you know they opportunists, yeah, and your opportunity is supposed to survive the opportunists. You know what I'm saying? So take advantage of the internet, man, and build your own website where you could put your music, put your, your 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 um your merch, put whatever product you you got out there. You know what I'm saying? And tapping in with your audience is the best way, right? So, man, gotta respect that. They've been disrespecting us for years. You know what I'm saying? So why not? Hey man, I love that. I love that. you think like me, man. They've been disrespecting for years to this day since the whispers. I'm watching the whispers interview and the beat goes on. I came out in 1979. 
I watched the interview with them last um last year on Tank's podcast. The first question the brother said was, "We we don't own our masters. We don't own our ownership." The same things we're saying now, brother. They're saying it, right? It's, it's been going on for so many years, even from Motown days to now. Like they're just taking advantage of us because they have the infrastructure, they have the economic strength, but we have the economic value. So having our own re common retailers, we can have economic strength too because we can distribute our own products ourselves and, and keep our economic value to us instead of giving it to them just because they put it in a shop or they put it on a website or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's great that we've got artists like you that, that can be... Because we need more people like you, brother, to be examples of it because people follow. Like Nipsey Hustle, he inspired me to, to, to do my own merch. He inspired... He's another guy who had his own retail store. He was the only yeah. one doing it actually was doing it, but then he signed it all the way to a label, which which I don't know why he did that, but who knows, I'm not in his shoes. But before he signed the deal, I'm sorry, sorry. No, no, I get you. And you know, it's it's not I feel like there's some forces around that might have, you know, made the, the the brother Nipsey um you know go and, and make and make that decision, right? But um I agree. I feel, I, I sense like he was always try, you know trying to stay true to to his motto, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, what happened there is, you know, it happened, but um, he definitely inspired me and inspired a lot of people to, you know, become entrepreneurs and such with what they got, you know what I mean? That's why, you know, that's what we got. We got the homie on right now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. On time. Nipsey was inspiration to me, man. I started selling much because Nipsey, and he had a smart store. Like, he understood retailing was the where it's at, you know what I mean? I think we need more... I think Nipsey, man, he would have been the first artist to sell to make a million dollars in twenty four hours independently. You know what I mean? He he was gonna be that guy. We got we got guys like Russ. Russ is another guy that right now, but Nipsey oh. had Russ is cool. Like Russ is doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? But he he's not cult. He's not he's not he's not shaping the culture yet. Nipsey could have shaped the culture and make everybody want to come entrepreneurs. You know, he inspired me and you to be entrepreneurs. Me. So when Nipsey, it's so sad what happened with Nipsey, man. Even to this day, it's hard for me to watch the interviews and stuff. I to get sad, man. I'm thinking this is a big loss, man. Big loss. One of the biggest losses we ever took. Trust me. Big loss, man. Like, if you check out his smart store, he was thinking so ahead. Like, an artist should be, when you watch Nipsey, go back and watch what Nipsey was doing. To me, that's what artists of the future are supposed to be like. You're supposed to have your own retail store. Yes, sir. You're supposed to be like Apple. We're supposed to be like Apple. Apple sell this phone, this phone in their own store. But you can also get this phone in, you know, in the T-Mobile store or the or the Horizon store. You know, wherever your software provider is. Over here, we've got O2 or EE. In Canada, you might have Horizon or something. Like that. I don't know what you guys have over there. But they sell it in their own stores as well through third party. Yeah. Why is it that yeah. an artist only sells his product, his album, his iPhone in third party store, Spotify, Tower Records, why is it never in his own store? So I just thought Nipsey was the only guy who understood that. Like I watched the interview, he even broke up in the interview. Like he was going to do the same thing Apple was doing with his product because he understood economics because he read, read a lot of books. So I said, once the artist starts doing their own distribution, that's what changes the whole the whole paradigm of, of the music business. The whole supply chain gets flipped on its head once we handle our distribution because the reason we don't, the supply chain, is the product is made by us. The price is then made by the corporation or the distributor. The promotion might be done by us, but most times you're signed, it's done by the label, and the distribution done by the label. You know what I'm saying? But even if you're independent, you're not doing your distribution. You're relying on that third party for that distribution. You know what I'm saying? But if you make yeah. your own distribution, you're, you're not dependent on them no more. You're now just using them as an extra place to sell your iPhone like Apple. So look at Apple's business model and apply it to yourself. That's what I'm trying to do. I think Nipsey, Nipsey done it. I think you can do it too, brother. Look at Apple's business oh, oh. Think, why can't we do that for ourselves you know what I mean our fans our fans people people go to Bandcamp Bandcamp made 1.6 or 1.2 billion dollars selling music directly on a website because there's a market for fans that want to directly support artists Bandcamp's whole model is it's a place where you can support the artists directly so why are we using Bandcamp why don't I make my own Bandcamp because people want to support me directly, but I'm using a third party again. Bandcamp's cool. I'm not saying nothing wrong with Bandcamp. They give you 80% of your money. They give you your data. They, Bandcamp would put Bandcamp would be the best place for an artist to sell music. Is Bandcamp. It's Bandcamp. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great place. I'm just saying, why can't you have your own Bandcamp? That's all I'm trying to say. 
where you can control the environment, where you control everything, where you control all the economics. Instead of giving bank camp that 15%, you keep that 15%. And now you're getting 97%, 96%, 95% of the money instead of 80% of the money. You know what I'm saying? And it's your sure. site. You don't have to... You can design it how you want to design it. If you want to put a, a new media player on there, a new a new audio player on there, you want to change the whole design, you can do whatever you want because it's your site. On Bandcamp, you can't do that. You can only upload a picture. Because everyone designed is the same on Bandcamp and you're sharing it with everybody else. So I'm just trying to put this in people's minds. Retailing is the way to go. Look at Nipsey Hustle. Look at Apple. You know what I'm saying? Look at what they were doing. Look at Ryan Leslie. There's models out there to do it. Because moving forward now, we can't rely on third parties to put our products out anymore because if they sell mm. it, if they sell their company to some to somebody else, it affects us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it all goes back to like we said, man, self respect. And I think like one of the biggest curses in, in, that we have in the culture is the love of fast money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> the love of fast money makes us fall into, you know, bullshit, man. And bullshit. The third third parties taking advantage and disrespecting us. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Fast money because we ain't got no money. That's why <laughs> we ain't got any money. If you, if you had loads of money, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You got money. Yeah. But you got to be patient too. You know what I'm saying? Because the more you build, and the more you have to operate. It's like we said, like a like a major company, which is you take that small percentage, you put it. It's it's a snowball effect. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, you got the mindset. You got the entrepreneur mindset. You understand what entrepreneurship is. Entrepreneurship isn't about making money. It's about taking an idea and staying true to that idea till the idea is fulfilled. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you, you're supposed to lose money. That's the whole point of being an entrepreneur. You don't. There's no company starts a startup. It starts a profit straight. Google did to profit straight away. You know what I'm saying? They had Amazon. Amazon. Oh my days! They only start profiting about five years ago. You know what I'm saying? They started in 1994. They, you have, to, have to learn to take the L's first, and then you will get to the dubs. You know. Yeah, and it's not even a, it's not even an L with business with entrepreneurship. It's 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 called, it's called feedback. We, we we learn what we're doing wrong, and we learn what we're doing right. It's yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you take L how you want. It could be a loss or, or or a lesson, but it's an L, right? So, but me for me, it's a lesson. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm consistent with it. Uh -huh. You know, and, but yeah, I mean, you you have to learn it. You have to. Keep going. It's, it's, it's not about the first, uh, you know what I'm saying, the first few years. It's about, it, like we said, like I had that mentality before, but the way the brother Nipsey described it was it's a, it's a marathon. You know what I'm saying? So you got to, you have to take that in before you even get in a game. You know what I'm saying? Understand that. I love this, man. Definitely a marathon, man. It's, that's what it is. Entrepreneurship. People think it's all about making money. Like people don't get business, man. They think it's all about making money. It's not about making money. It's about what you're offering to the world and how good that is and how consistent you are with that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Money is just there to help you. It's it's a game of points we're in. You know what I mean? And money is just part of the game we're in of points. You need points to operate. You know what I mean? And um, success is based on points. The more points you have, the more successful you're gonna be. But you have to invest those points to even make points. You know what I'm saying? Everything's about points. It's all a points game. You know what I mean? So. A lot of people think it's all about making money without understanding how you actually make money. Money just exchange or value. So if you're not making if you're not making any value or providing any value, why should you get money? <laughs> Mine's just paper, but it's just paper and numbers in a database. Numbers on a value. You gotta build it, man. Yeah, I think like you should invest all your money into it. You know what I mean? Because that the reason why I say people should invest their money into their own money into the ideas, because if it don't work out, it's on you. If you borrow money from somebody else, it's too much stress comes with that. You know what I mean? That, sure. person, that person only gave you dough to make dough. Now you're playing the his game. You should take your own your own money and invest it into yourself. And that means it's down to you. If it didn't work, it's down to you. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's never a bad investment. I'm not profiting off my business yet. I'm making revenue, but I'm not profiting. But I'm seeing a return. As long as you're seeing a return on your investment, that should let you know that your your idea is working. If you're not seeing it, yeah. you, sorry, sorry? No, I'm sorry to gush. Uh, I'm saying it's, you're in a good path. You, you definitely, you know. Yeah. If you invest $20,000 and you're seeing about two Gs back, keep on doing it. Because as an investor, I'm not making my money back. So I was looking at so whatever you do, whatever you did to make those two Gs, keep doing it. Because no, in music, especially in music, music it can be for, music's free. So if you're making two Gs on music, you better keep doing it. 
Because you make you make your money from it, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know I'm Free saying. You know what I'm saying? Like no, no investment made is yeah, sick, yeah, man. You have to invest, you have to, it's like any business. Music is no different to any other business. All right. Once you decide to make your music for public consumption, you are now entering the world of business and trade. Okay. Yeah. If you don't want to do that, then don't release your music or don't expect people to listen to it or to support it. Just do it for a hobby. Like playing people play soccer or, or play football. We call it football. I think we call it football in Canada as well. We call it football, right? People play football or soccer in the to stay fit. You know what I'm saying? Or for could they enjoy they enjoy it? And some do it professionally. Now, most artists are gonna make that distinction between the two. Are you doing are you doing art and rapping because you just you want to express yourself and it's fun? Or are you doing it as a career to pay your bills? If picking it to pay your bills, you gotta be an entrepreneur. You gotta invest your money. You gotta do what the guy who owns the bakery store is doing, or the guy who makes the Tesla cars is doing. You gotta do the same thing Elon Musk is doing, the same thing Jeff Bezos is doing. You have to do. It's called investment, it's called planning, it's called risk. So, um, I love that you understand this, bro, because you understand it, and I think a lot of artists don't understand it, man. Um, a lot of question I want to ask you, man, is is this? Um, what's your views on copyright? I'll be right, man. Uh, it, it, it changed the game. You know, what I'm saying that is is like it brought copyright is the reason why, you know, now these corporations are took interest into this art because they knew that, OK, I could you know, copyright this. I can, you know, get the rights, uh, get the masters, get to this. Get, you know what I'm saying? Like all of that is is is. It's what we're talking about, uh, paperwork and such, you know what I mean? So very important, man. Very important to understand that part of the game, copyrights, man. Like you have to protect your, you know, your art. You have to protect whatever you put out there, man. And trademarks, copyrights shouldn't be neglected. So and that's very, very crucial for your success or for, you know, just to own your stuff, man. Definitely, man. Even even to own your name as well, like Joe Capadre, she trademarked your name. Like this logo, yeah. our logo is trademarked in England and Ireland, so I trademarked it. And it costs about 400, 300 pounds every 10 yeah. years. So um, we, we trademark, I don't know about LLC, I, haven't, I, know, I know about it, but I haven't set up an LLC yet. But um, yeah. but that's that's the next step to the LLC because um that, that protects you legally. But right now, you can trademark your name right now, and Joker Padre or Wound to the Tomb. That's your, that's your brand, right? Yeah. You, you, can, you can trademark that now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know the guy, the, the Rock, the, the Rock, Dwayne Johnson, the Rock. Um, he recently owns the trademark to, to all of his names and phrases. So he owns the, the Rock, the name, the Rock. He owns, he, he owns it now this year. Um, the people champ, Jabroni, all the things he used to say in wrestling. He owns all those phrases. So for us as artists, we have to own our. Our, our brand, our logos, our name, our phrases, our catchphrases, we can do that now. You know what I'm saying? It's not even hard to do. Like, I did it 10 years ago. I renewed it just recently. But um, it costs about 300... It costs more money depending on what how many countries you want to tr protect, protect it in. But right. trademarking your name is very important, man. So if you joke up your name itself, it should be trademarked because someone can take your name and trademark it. And then you have changed mm. your name. I'm saying, or someone can take your brand name and then take it from you. If they trademark it, they now own it. So it's very yeah. important. The trademark is very important. And that's why a record label, when a record label signs you, they don't just own your copyrights and your publishing. They want to own your trademark, your name, your image, your likeness, your voice. You know what I'm saying? Because everything. They, everything. Especially now, if they know, you block right now, you 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 block right now, and 20 years later, people will wear your face on a T-shirt. Like, you... Michael and it's not. I'm oh, yeah. sorry. No, it's, and it's not even. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's what it is. You have to protect that man, because it's like it could get to a point where people are just gonna use everything you you made to 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 make some gain and you know profit off of it. So it's like, nah, man. You have to. It's a, it, it goes back to self respect again. It goes back to that man. Brother, everyone wears Michael. I was watching a Dane Dash interview last night. One guy had Michael. One guy had Math Hoffa had Michael Jordan on his shirt, and Dane Dash had Run DMC in his shirt. I'm like, look, you have to own your image, your likeness now. Like, you have to own Joker Padre. I have to own DIY and T the Do Yourself Entertainment. Well, I do own it, but like I prop maintain the ownership in it. You know what I'm saying? Because, bro, we don't know when it's gonna be in ten years, twenty years from now. We don't know where it's gonna end up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it, 
if it does end up big, we need to own our image. Like the way you look right now, you have a good image. You know what I'm saying? People could yeah. people where you where you you might you, you might be the face of Montreal like 10, 15 years. You know mm. what I'm saying? So you have to protect your image, your likeness. So always know about trademarking. Trademarking is so important. Get the domain name's good, but you need to trademark and have ownership of the name, your logo, your phrases, your ownership of your brand, basically. It's very important, man. Um my next question to you, man. This is probably the last question we'll ask you, man. Um, like, do you do you do you like I don't know, like, do you feel like uh like I'm gonna ask you about Drake, right? That's someone's from Canada. Why is Drake so big? Right, he's massive. He's massive, yeah. Um, uh, well, it's a question that I I don't you know, I don't know how to answer that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you know, getting a call sign from Lil Wayne's, especially at the heights of his career, you know, he, he was peaking at that time. And, you know, you, you get in a cosign, not only from Wayne, it started from, uh, what's his name? Um, the rap a lot, uh, Jazz Prince Jr. was or something. So, you know, started from that. And also, you know, he, 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 he's good at what he does. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's good at what he's, you know, sharing out there. So I feel like then the country, you know, the whole country backed them up. You know, Canada as a, as an entire nation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, protects and and uh, also, you know, always supports Drake. So I feel like that's one of the biggest reasons, you know what I'm saying? Like he has the whole nation behind him, mm -hmm. one of the biggest superstars behind him, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he made a lot of hits, man. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what else to say, man. It's, it's, it's hard to ask. Even you know, get in details into details of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I asked you because I, I'm you're from Canada. I just thought maybe you have a different perspective. Because I'll be honest, man, I, I, I don't listen to Drake's music. Like I used to back in the day when he first came out, like back in the yeah. day. Because, but I find him on YouTube. But I just don't, I just don't understand why he's so big. Like I get it, like he can rap and stuff. But like, like even now, he's like he's, he's the biggest like in the whole industry. And like I don't I don't understand. But I kind of my thing is to you is like. For me, I don't see Drake as a Canadian. I don't care where Drake's from. I just think he, I just think he's Drake. I don't think he's from Can. I just think he's a normal guy. Like, I don't think oh he's from Canada ever. Like, yeah, I just think he's Drake. You know, he rap, he rap, he sings, does his thing, man. That's it. Like, I don't feel like like he's from Canada. But I think what you said is so true. It's like, it's how you market and brand the artist because um the same way like you say the Little Wayne thing that that's what blew him up to the next level. Because at that time, Lil Wayne was the biggest guy in the world and at the time. But it's also with, like, the game and, and the G in it. When the game first came out, he had 50% behind him at the time with the biggest artist on the planet. You know what I'm saying? So it's so true. It's, it's how you roll out and brand the artist and communicate the artist is very important to, to success. Like, even with you with Jayla, that's going to help you in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? People say, who's this guy with Jayla Kiss? So it's true. I think it's, it's how they presented Drake. And also he had good music as well. But it's how he's presented to the world. So I just thought I asked you because you're from Canada. I thought you have a different perspective because he's massive over here, man. He's big over here, big, big over here, big in America. But um, I just thought I'd get Canadian perspective on Drake because the biggest artists in the world are Canadian, man. They're not really American, bro. The Weekend, nah. Canada. Drake's from Canada. Justin Bieber from Canada. They're all from Canada, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. But there's no like, um, there's no like, there's no more like you. That's from Canada. Nah. That's proper hip hop and stuff like that. I'm telling you now, you got the market, bro. Tell you, man, it's Montreal, man. They just don't, you know what I mean? Like, it's what it is, man. We like that underground hip hop on this side, man. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't the same. Man. It's just... uh, it ain't even over here in London, man. We don't really have no like, um, like we got hip hop scene over here, but it's more like drill music and like uh, grind music and like uh, all that. Man. Yeah, there's no like hip hop like. I don't know. I don't hear it. All I hear is drill music. I don't. I don't hear drill, but it's one I hear what's popular. Drill music and um, I don't know, like grind music and stuff like that. So similar over here, man. We don't. It's more American. We don't really have that hip hop, raw hip hop kind of like real music, soulful. We're gonna call it. We don't really have that over here. But I just feel like there's a big audience for that. It's just that we, it's hard to find people like you. So I think. Right. That I'm so happy to get you on this podcast today. So hopefully I can push this out there and get more people to know about you because I feel like we want artists like you, bro. You know what I mean? We're real. We need we want artists like you. 
because the record record labels aren't putting out artists like you no more. So we, we're not aware of it no more. Or big platforms aren't pushing artists like you because they're not aware of it no more. You know what I'm saying? So, like you said, back to back to Drake, back to um, the game. Like they all had big co signs to brand them, to put them out there. Because and Drake when it came out, when Drake first came, Drake's first album came out, it didn't do that well. You know what I'm saying? His first album do that well. Like it sold records, but culturally it didn't. No one really was banging Drake. Everyone's no one really rated Drake at the start. You know what I'm saying? It's not till yeah. he, not till he did a couple more albums. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And everyone started rating Drake. So um, but again, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna not against Drake though. I think he's alright. I just I just I just feel I think he does get a lot of hate though. He gets a lot of unnecessary hate though, Drake. Like people just hate Drake for for no reason. Like I don't know why. Well, apart from the, you know, like like I feel like apart from the fact that he got the co sign from from Wayne and and that he does the kind of music he does is like, you know, he he appeals more to the ladies. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying. And and he, and within staying true to to who he is, you know what I'm trying to say. And so it's like, I feel like yes, a lot of people hate the fact that you know. He has a lot of uh, um, that kind of public behind, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, as, as we say, hip hop is is rugged. Hip hop is this, is hip hop is that. You know and I mean, like, I feel like uh, even Kanye, yeah. you know, a lot of hate just because he's he's not the the type of hip hop that that people like within the purest form listens to. You know what I'm saying? When I say purest, I'm talking about, I don't know. you know, People that might like what I do more than what they do. Yeah, I like you know? I won't listen so, to you all day. I like you. I think you can blow, but I think you can have millions of fans. But it's not. It's not just that you make. It's not like you like. It's not like you like. Like it's not like because you make real hip hop because you make great art, bro. It's not just the fact that like your product, yeah. your your presentation is great. I can tell you put a lot of effort into that. Like no no disrespect to like other rappers you have on TV and stuff. They don't put a lot of effort into their music anymore. Like if you had Drake's old stuff ten years ago to now, the big difference. You know what I'm saying? He put a lot of effort into his old stuff now. He's you know, but you put a lot of effort into your stuff. I'm not comparing you to, to Drake, I'm just using an example on it. But it's like cause you're on your own lane. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I just feel like you could be a big artist because based on your product, your art and where you're from. I think you have a good story to tell. Like you're from Montreal. Like people want to know about your story. Like we want to know where you what, like so I feel like you can you can blow big bro. It's just about getting your find your audience man. Know how to do the marketing part. You got the product part down pack. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing part. It's the communication part, man. Like you know this this interview can can give me, you know, new a new audience, a new, you know, perspective on you know, Montreal or Canadians or whatever. It, it's just about the presentation. Like you said, it's a communication thing, man. And, and you know, with that co-sign that I got from Jada, it definitely helped me a lot. You know what I mean? Because, again, it goes back to, you know, you got one of the greatest bigging you up. So, yeah, yeah it's realizable, man. It's doable. Uh, it's def it is doable. I just feel like, like you said, it's all about that co-sign. It's very important because the Jada Kiss thing definitely helped, man. Like, it just it helps because again he Jay it's called brand equity it's called equity he gave his brand equity to you because he saw something valuable in you same with Jay Prince with Drake same with the fifty with the game you know what I mean like it's all about that cosign you know what I mean even like most rappers get put on for a cosign like most of them do like Jay Z people forget that Biggie cosigned Jay Z people forget that like mm. nine in nine yeah. is Biggie Biggie was the man in, in nine six nine seven. Jay Z sure. was an unknown artist. You know what I mean? Biggie put Jay Z in his album "Life After Death," and he put any he, Biggie was in his videos, two of his videos. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He co-signed Jay Z. Gave Jay Z that brand equity. People forget that. So everyone needs that co-sign. Or 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 nowadays it's like a big platform promoting you, like a big YouTube channel or a big yeah. IG page promoting you. That's still a co-sign. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I just feel like there's so many ways to um get yourself out there. But I feel like artists like yourself, um, you've got a massive fan base waiting for you. It's just your job to find them. Because I'm telling you, bro, when I heard your product, and I keep saying it, but I don't see, I don't hear a lot of music I like these days. I'll be real. Like most artists I see signed or not signed or legend or not legend, their current music just not, doesn't resonate with me. But it's, when I heard your stuff, I was like, yo, this is really good. Like, this is really, really, really good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, 
Like, this needs to be heard. And that's how you know I'm a fan. When, when, when your fans want you to be heard, that's when you know you got fans. That's when you, that's when you know you make something really good because your fans want people to hear you. You know what I'm saying? You know when you find a new artist that you like and no one knows, you want everyone to know them because you really yeah. like that's yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That's you, bro. You're the type of artist now, man. I just feel like you got to keep doing your thing. Um, keep making the music you're making. Keep thinking about the market and the business and eventually you'll start building a core fan base, man. You know what I mean? Sure, cool. for sure. I mean, yeah, the main purpose is to, you know, share the good message. You see, you see what I'm saying? Every time I, I drop a track, there's, there's the substance side to it. This is, you know, I ain't trying to sell no GMOs, you feel me? I, I try to keep it organic. So no fantasies, no none of that shit. Let's speak the truth and, you know what I'm saying, let's say something that they can take out of it. You know what I'm saying? That, that's positive. Feel me? See what he said there? That's why I'm your fan. That, that's, that's the type of artist that I'm looking for. Everything you said there speaks the truth, speaks positive, has a good message and... That's to me. That's to me. That's an artist to me. That's a true artist to me. A true artist is someone that sells records when he's famous. Just doesn't make you a true artist. So what you said there it makes you a true artist, in my opinion. That's what I'm looking for. And I think there's so many more people like me that want that. There's loads, of, bro. There's loads of us online. Most of my followers are like are like me and you. That's most of my fan follower base is like me and you. So that's why when I, when I put you in, put you in front of them, they liked it because that's what they're looking for. You know what I'm saying? That's why I knew when I put in my story, I know they're going to like this. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they're looking for. So, bro, it's like I said, if you need any help with the market and any like any more, just holler at me, man, because I feel like you've got the product. It's just getting the target market. You know what I'm sure. saying? Finding, sure. finding the target market and then delivering the value to them. You've got the product, which is the value. It's just finding them. And then once you find them, how are you going to communicate to them? You know what I mean? So... Um, yeah. Anything you want to say, bro, before we, before we before you finish? Anything you want to say? Promote? Hey, yes, sir. I feel like, you know, shout out to people like you, man. We do we do this music thing for the ones that really appreciate the culture to that level. You see what I'm saying? So, from Montreal, straight up, with love, you know? Yeah. That's a, it's been a pleasure. You know, it's been a pleasure to speak to you, bro, and just tap in with you, man. You know what I mean? You're my, I'm a fan, you know what I'm saying? So... I appreciate it. Yeah. You're a good brother as well. You're humble. That's one thing I like about you. I love humble people. I'm humble myself. I pride in me. I should say pride. You know, I like humble people. I think that's a very valuable thing to me. And you, you have you have you're very humble. You know what I mean? You're willing to learn. You know what I mean? You're willing to listen. You know what I mean? And you and you and you and you're willing to improve. And I love the fact that you 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 wanna you wanna do something good with your art. I think a lot of people don't care, they just wanna make money. You said, nah, 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 I wanna, I wanna speak positive, get people to get excited from me in a good way. And we need more right. people like you, bro. That's why I'm trying to support because we need more people like you, man. I mean, I'm being serious. Like, we need more artists like you in the world, man. Because there's too many, there's, there's too much, this demonic stuff out there. We type positive, you know what I mean? That you know, I can like with your music. I can play your music with my with my family and not feel any way about it. You know what I'm saying? Like most people, most rappers, I can't play my music around with my mom because they're talking madness. <laughs> with you, I can just put it on and it's just we're chilling. I man say they're talking madness. Nah, they, they silly with it, man. They definitely silly. Hey, man, integrity, morals, you know what I'm saying, principles. It's, you know what I'm saying, that's what kept me, the you know, the person that I am today. That's how, that's how I'm built, you feel me? So I won't change that for nothing, you know what I'm saying? I remember that. Inheriting the music, man. We can hear it. We can hear it in the music, man. And I just feel like, um, just keep doing, don't stop, man. I know you're not going to, because I, I, can, I can feel your passion through the screen. You know what I'm saying? But just keep doing it because, bro, you never know when God's going to give you your opportunity. That's one thing I can tell you from what I've been doing the last couple of years. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this last month, I'll be speaking to people. This last month, I'll be talking to people that, like, directly, I'll, I bought their albums and I'll be fans of them and I'll speak to them. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know how it's even happened, but it's happened because it's just God's timing for me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like me and you connected this thing just to review as well. Like, I feel like, you keep going because you never know when God's gonna give you your time. We might, we might think it's, we might think, oh, we want it now, but we don't know what we want. We might think we know what we want. We have to keep going, keep going, keep going until God says your time. And I think with you, everything you said today, I said God's gonna bless you, God willing, because you're you're doing it for the right reason. You're not doing it for the wrong reason. You're doing it because you're, you're using your talent in the right way. Because you can work with so many, you can work with, you can work with so many people. You can work with Jada Kiss. You can work with J Cole. You can work with Kendrick Lamar. You can work with like you work with ninety rappers. The guys out today, you've got such a broad spectrum of people that because your sound and, your, and what you're doing is so kind of universal. 
um, I feel like you can work with a lot of people. So, um, and the fact that you're from Montreal gives you gives you more that branding. You know, it gives you that uniqueness as well. So it's just it's just it's all you got a lot to you 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 got a lot man going on right now, brother. Yo, man, and we gonna back that up for sure. You know what I'm saying we are gonna stay consistent. Definitely, man. And um, couple of things. Yeah, anything you want to anything you want to say before we should, before you like want to promote or you want to say this uh like any, any new projects coming out, any new videos, any new websites, anything coming we should know about. So yeah, um, man, tap in with the with the track so soulful with me and Jadakiss, Joe Compadre. You know what I'm saying? I dropped another one called Palo Santo. This out right now. Video out right now. You know what I'm saying? The website, JoeCompadre.com. And yeah, man, we got a whole lot of projects coming in. You know what I'm saying? We got uh, the EP dropping around uh, beginning of Mar uh, April, sorry, end of March. We have, you know what I'm saying, more more uh, singles dropping soon. And pretty much thank the system, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we got going on, man. Yeah, oh, my brother, man. It's been a pleasure. All right. Make sure make sure everyone checks him out, please, man. You people are gonna see him on my IG as well. You know what I mean? But please check him out, man. Because this guy, I think this guy right here has got a bright future, God willing, you know what I mean? Because he's got the whole package. He's got the personality, he's got the image, got the got the content, got the art, got the lyrics, got the flow, got the voice, got the mindset, and he's humble. He's got all the whole package. So God willing, this guy can spar right here, can can do it. And I mean that. I don't co-sign a lot of people, I'll be honest, man, because I don't even listen to music, if I'm real to you. I listen to, like, old school, like, back in the day music, mostly. Like, I'm talking 70s now, 80s, and maybe some 60s stuff now. But it's rare I hear new rappers because I just don't come across stuff I like. So it's very rare that I come across artists of today's world that I like, and you're one of them, bro. So well, DIY, ANT, do stuff entertainment, we're supporting you no matter what. And the UK, oh. and the UK, we get behind you as well. So it's so all love, man. But this is a so any anyway, story, brother. If you want to say, I talk a lot, man. I do apologize because I'm, when I'm with you, I get too excited, man. Oh, hey, man, that's man. You know, I don't really do interviews that much, man. And, and for real, bro, I appreciate everything you you bring to the to the culture, man. Like it's it's a honor it's a, and a pleasure for me to do it, man. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. My brother, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on this podcast, making time for me, man. So you know, what I mean, we're both we're both of us are on the come up. You know, what I mean, we're on the same level, bro. We're trying to come up. On our, on, our, on our own you know what I'm saying that's what I'm trying to help you we're helping each other right now you know what I mean so I want to help you I want to help you in the marketing side though because I want you to be heard because I know once people hear your stuff and see it they're going to be down with it you know what I'm saying and I think okay. you have a low fan base where you, that will support you that will buy your albums will, will donate buy your albums buy your merch stuff like that because you make that quality stuff that people want you know what I'm saying we want your music bro <laughs> I'm telling you now people <laughs> want this music they just don't hear it. All their hairs, people only know it's marketing to them, innit? Unfortunately. That's why everyone's like, every time, you hear, every time you hear, sorry, brother, you hear top 10 artists, it's always someone signed to a company, signed to a corporation, because that's all they know, because of the marketing. And it's never, yeah. it, like right now, I'll put you in my top five right now. I'm talking about artists that I, that I like right now, you will be in it, because I listen to your music. I don't play Eminem, I don't play Jay-Z, I don't play, I don't play these guys, you know what I'm saying? But, Everyone else will put them in their top ten because that's or I, I don't even play Ice Cube. I don't play none of that. I play your music, cause, so you're in my top ten or my top five because I play your music. You feel me? You're not yeah. saying I, I do it based because on what I like. Most people do it on what they what they like, but the only thing they like is what they know what's being marketed to them. They never ever put an unsigned artists in their top five or top ten. It's always someone who signed because of marketing. So um, yeah. Yeah, man, but it's Truth in the Brief podcast. I'm ill right now. My nose is running, you know what I'm saying? But I had to come in here and, and, and support my boy, you know what I mean? Because he's coming, he's supporting me, get up early in the morning to, to do this. And it's a Truth in the Brief podcast. And make sure you go on DIYENT.com. You can hear the audio version of this or go on or DIYENT YouTube channel and watch the video of this when it's out. So this is DIYENT and we out. Truth in the Brief. Peace. I'm a nose.